Hey YouTube, welcome to the channel. My name is Rich. The name of the channel is Rich the Return Rider. For all you folks that's here for the first time, thanks for tuning in. For all you folks that's return viewers, I appreciate you coming back. For all that subscribe to the channel, appreciate the support. For you folks that haven't yet subscribed, guys, hit that subscribe button. It takes nothing off you to hit that subscribe button. It helps to support the channel big time. Anyway, folks, so what we're doing today, we are in Lake City, Florida here. This is, of course, a sunny afternoon, well, a sunny evening. Uh, we are at the Southside Complex. Uh, this is a sports complex here. They're playing baseball games and so forth here. I usually come here to practice during the week. There's no cars or anything here, but today there's a tournament going on. But guys, I'm excited to bring you a video here of things that I have learned, especially about making U-turns. And one of the things that I want to talk about today, first of all, I want to credit uh, Robert Simmons, be the boss of your motorcycle. And also, I saw Rich from Boots and Jeans Rider do exercise with the motorcycle upright, making complete turns with the steering or the handlebars locked so we can see the turning radius of our motorcycles. And after I watched those videos, I think the last one Robert did was with the Indian Pursuit. And after I watched those videos, I said to myself, well, I haven't seen a video out there with the Generation 6. That would be the 2018 to the 2023 Honda Goldwing. And what's the capabilities of this motorcycle as far as the turning radius? So that's what this video is going to be all about. And then I'm going to talk you through some of the practices, some of the things that I'm learning. And of course, on this channel, that's what it's all about, guys. Of course, throttle therapy and bringing you guys the things that I learned, sharing it with you guys. And of course, in the comment section, getting uh, suggestions, comments, and critiques from you guys also. But yeah, guys, we're out here with Ruby today. What we're going to be doing, now I already measured these parking spaces, and they're not nine feet apart, they're nine and a half feet apart. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to turn the motorcycle upright with the steering at full lock to see the turning radius of the, um, the Generation 6 Honda Goldwing. And guys, why that was enlightening and important to me as I'm getting out there and practicing is I have been, well, let's say I have been given constructive criticism of me leaning the motorcycle more than I have to to make these 18 foot U-turns. And the thing about that, as we know, guys, as you increase the lean angle of the motorcycle, you increase the risk. Of course, the risk of going down, the risk of losing traction and so many things. So I thought it was important to know what the turning radius of the Honda Goldwing is and then I would have to decide or I would go from there to decide how much it requires to make that 18 foot U-turn, how much lean and so forth. So let's get that. Let's do that. All right, guys, we're going to jump on Ruby here. As you can see, I'm right there by the white line. We are going to crank her up. And we are going to turn the steering full lock. We're going to duck walk Ruby across the parking lot here. Of course, this is a voiceover, guys. Uh, my mic did fail on me. So we're going to see where we end up here as we are getting to the other side of the line. We're going to straighten up the motorcycle. We are going to jump off of Ruby. And we are going to get our little handy dandy measuring tool out here. Now, guys, I did use a tape measure to confirm the accuracy of this um, instrument. What we're going to do is we're going to walk across the parking lot here until we get to the middle of the rear tire of Ruby. And I don't know if I've mentioned to you guys, but these parking lots in between the lines we're about nine and a half feet. What I want you to see here is that we are right at about 18 feet here with Ruby. So yeah, guys, so the thing that I want to, to say there is that means that if we can maneuver this motorcycle as slow as possible with full lock, we can do an 18 foot U-turn. Anyway, guys, so what we're showing you here now is this is my Insta360. It's important to note, guys, that I am on the 2019 Honda Going, and this is the manual version, not the DCT. But we're still going to talk about uh, what we're doing here. We're trying to use as much space as we can actually going into the turn. And as you can see there, guys, one of the things that I've always been critiqued 
uh, with with um, Robert Simmons is swooping through the turn as you can see there guys I'm going into the turn and I'm coming kind of coming out uh, with some momentum and a little bit of angle now what is recommended is that you approach the turn in the friction zone uh, keep the same speed that you're using to go into the turn uh, we should be using again the friction zone and it should give you the sensation of the motorcycle pulling you through the turn I'm gonna imagine guys with the DCT you guys have a bite point just like we have a friction zone so keeping your throttle as steady as possible so you stay in that uh, what I would refer to as your friction zone and use a little bit of rear brake and be able to make the turn just like you would if you had a clutch Yeah, guys, it's one of my struggles, again, is staying in that friction zone. I have the tendency to kind of manipulate the clutch while I'm in the turn. But, of course, you want to keep that throttle up. You know what I'm saying is, as long as we got sufficient power going to that rear wheel, the motorcycle should not fall. So, what I'm doing here, guys, is I'm coming to a stop and turning. As you can see there, I hit that cone over to the left. Man down, cone down. But yeah, guys, I struggle with the placement of my foot when I'm coming to a stop. Uh, one of the things that I decided to do in the future is not even worry about that. But as soon as I move off, put the front wheel where it needs to be before I make the turn. So I'm not worried about hitting the cones with my feet as I come to a stop. Uh, nice smooth stop there. As I'm moving off, a little lazy in the commitment to the turn. So it pushes me a little wide. Uh, probably a little better turn there with a, a decent stop. You know, again, guys, that's why I'm out here practicing to get a little bit more control, a little bit more finesse of manipulating the throttle, the brake, and so forth. But guys, hang in there to the end of the video, and I'm going to share a couple of the things that I have learned uh, getting back into riding here That would help with the handling of the motorcycles you can see there guys it made a pretty a pretty sharp turn there But again use some momentum as I came out of that turn there um, Not full not in full control of the motorcycle A little slower a little bit more control there but Yeah, guys, um, just a little bit of practice of trying to control the bike stand in the friction zone having the uh, the friction zone pull me through the turn committing to the turn head and eyes as you can see there guys probably a little excessive with the counterbalancing one of the things that I use the counterbalancing for is to take away the sensation of falling if you're turning with the motorcycle and you're leaning with the motorcycle into the turn there is that uneasy feeling of feeling like you're falling uh, none of us want to feel like we're out of control there. So I think counterbalancing helps with that a little bit. Like I said, guys, if you guys could see anything that I can do better here, uh, you can, you know, again, be respectful. But you can leave it in the comment section there to help me or anybody else that might be watching this video here with these U-turns. All right, folks, we're going to wrap this up. I'm going to get back to the garage. I'm going to give a couple of tips with the cones and so forth that I'm using where to get them from they're relatively inexpensive and again you know just one or two tips on the handling of the motorcycle and seven the settings of the motorcycle I should say All right, YouTube, we're going to wrap this video up. As promised, I'm going to give you uh, some tips here that I have been given getting back into riding. Uh, the first one, guys, is going to be the first class I did ride like a pro with Jerry Palladino. Well, actually, the second class. One of the things that they suggested we do is show up at the class with 42 pounds of air in the motorcycles. 
Now in the case of the Honda Goldwing, 36 is our uh, suggested pressures. Uh, 41 is in the back. So what I did guys, I put 42 in the back of Ruby and in the front, I did 40 PSIs. So the thing about that is I think it helps the bike to transition a little easier as you're maneuvering the bike, but at least make sure that you have at least the suggested or the recommended pressure in your tires. As it's getting cooler here in Florida, guys, I, my tire pressures has been dropping a little bit lower, so I'm conscious before I ride to air the bike up. The next one for you guys that have adjustable suspensions out there, I uh, don't know how the other motorcycles work, but in the case of the Honda Goldwing, we can get a little bit more ground clearance by putting the motorcycle in the two-up mode, adjusting the suspension. And in my case, I did the two-up mode along with luggage. Now, in the case of the World Mojo drop guards there that actually restrict the lean angle of the bike. Now, the Honda Goldwing got plenty of lean angle, guys. It got about 40 degrees, I think, of lean angle from what I read. So having those drop guards on really doesn't restrict the bike but so much. As you can see, guys, I was out there, I was doing the 18 foot U-turns or close to, and I never once rake uh, the, the crash bars. So yeah, guys, air the bike up, at least the appropriate uh, air pressures if you don't wanna go above. And if you have an adjustable suspension, guys, it's a good time to uh, put that suspension up a little, give you a little bit of clearance. The Honda Goldwing doesn't turn like the Harley Davidson's for the reasons of we don't have as much turning angle on the steering. And the bike is a little longer wheelbase than most of the Harley Davidson's, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah. So yeah, those are two, I think, important suggestions. The other thing is, I continue to hear how expensive motorcycle riding is. Guys, I have got back into riding motorcycle as a return rider on a budget. And one of the things that I'm gonna start doing is sharing with you guys some of the things that I have done or I have tried to keep stuff affordable. Now we can't go into the parking lots, any parking lot, and we can use the lines in the parking lot to help practice our stuff. But what I realized is when you have barriers, guys, it makes your mind think a little different. Uh, it makes you a little ap apprehensive when there's barriers there. That's why the cones and and so forth is seem to be pretty you know you know pretty important but one of the things that i struggled with as i was using or i was doing different classes is when you run over some of the heavier cones as the motorcycle is in a turn it almost feels like you hit the sand because with these some of the things that you the cones that you're running over depends on how they are it might make the front of the bike slide may make you a little uneasy so what i found works for me as I'm starting to learn to ignore those markers, is tennis balls. This is what I got back into using. This is what I got into using when I got back into riding. I put the tennis balls down, you'll run over those tennis balls, they'll flip over or they'll come out of place and you wouldn't even know that you hit them until you turn and you look around. You will have a sensation that you hit them because you're using your peripheral vision, but these were awesome. But as I started recording and trying to, you know, get more, things visible. I went to these two options here because they show up also better on camera. Plus again, having the little taller cone, which is not real tall, uh, was awesome. Um, again, these things are at Walmart. They are relatively inexpensive. I'm sure you can go on Amazon and buy probably better cones than these, but I kind of like to see what I'm getting before I get them. And the thing about it, guys, I've never experienced any wind problem with these and these are light. So I'm sure if there's heavy winds, it's gonna blow them away. That's just part of the deal. If they're heavy winds or the winds is kind of high, I'm probably not gonna be out practicing or I will just be using the parking lot uh, lines. But yeah, guys, as you can see, they're slotted in between. So maybe that helped with some of the wind. But yeah, guys, this has been awesome. I think I can buy as many of these as I want. I go to Walmart, they're relatively cheap. I've got probably over a hundred of these. And it does the trick. You know, one of the things that I'm gonna say, guys, is um, the importance of this stuff is, uh, I know we don't wanna drop our motorcycles and so forth. I have to say, I haven't dropped the motorcycle since the last class that I've been at. Uh, go check the class out of the Battle of the Bullwings is the name of that video. Check it out, guys. I had, uh, I think, two or three drops. 
Thank God for the World Motor Drop Guards. There was no injury or no damage uh, done to either me or Ruby. But folks, the goal going back on November 5th to do the practice is, as I get out and practice now, I know there are things there that I won't attempt that I will have to be doing extreme to be able to accomplish them. Uh, 18 foot U-turns is important to me, guys, because out in the country area where I am, a lot of the roads might be 24 feet wide, but as the grass starts to grow over the road, it really restricts your the amount of area that you have to turn in. My fears out there, guys, is stray dogs. I often ride into some of the country areas, one of the places I used to live, and you know, there are gonna be times when you're gonna see a bunch of dogs and so forth over there. They'll come out even before you get to them. And if you can make that U-turn and get out of there, it's great. The other thing is having full control of the motorcycle. You know, it's a big deal. Um, so anyway, guys, that's what I wanna say in this video. You get a chance, like I said, go check out uh, the Battle of the Bull Wings. See all the things that I struggle with that I'm gonna be working on here before I go back out to the next practice. The goal is to not drop the motorcycle and not to hear Robert say to me, head and eyes, head and eyes. You know, my wife always says he's yelling, but I got it, Rob. But yeah, so that's the goal, to get back out and see what I have improved on and what else I need to work on. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'll leave a comment in the comment section below if you see anything that I can do better. Uh, again, you know, but like, share, subscribe. At the end of the day, man, it's better that you drop your bike on a cone course or in a parking lot gonna crash them out in the streets. Rich, out practicing with Ruby, and I'm out.